Indeed, the corridors uh, help all the business sector and trading sector to operate normally, if I may say so, in the Black Sea region for Ukraine and also for Russia. Uh, both countries have exported and more than 75 million tons of grain. So you see how it has been very relevant, more than 30 percent of the wheat exported globally. So that's what's the, uh, the positive side of, the, of this grains corridor. Can you explain to us uh, the possible implications for uh, European food prices and, and secondly for the humanitarian situation uh, in uh, Africa? So um, the first consequence is the increase of the, of the wheat price. And definitively, we have seen a plus 7% increase from last Friday. And there is no reason uh, to uh, this uh, increase stop now uh, with a new declaration from the delegation of Russia. As now what we have to look in the future is you, we know that uh, EU need always to import corn, but thanks to a very good production in, in Brazil and in the US, so we, we expect that there would be not too much impact for the livestock sector in EU. But the problem will be really on the wheat market and particularly for the poorest country because the alternatives will be only on regions where the wheat is much more higher in price than, than the Black Sea region. Given that uh, Russia has been uh, voicing dissatisfaction uh, for so long, why haven't alternatives to uh, uh, Ukraine's grain export been explored or discussed? Well, I would say the grain sector in Ukraine have developed a new alternative in terms of means of transportation. So it's by train uh, to EU. Uh, even if at current time it's blocked and would only resume by September, and also the, the Ukrainian uh, sector have invested a lot on river ports and they have invested in more than 12 terminals in order to export the, the grains via the Danube. So only one thing is these two means of transportation are more costly than the deep sea port uh, shipments.